Trey Cool, <laughs> uh, known also as Frank Evan Wright III, was born in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, 9 December 1972. My brother Trey was a really cute baby, and old ladies used to come up and, oh, look at this beautiful baby girl, and he would kick them. I was in the military at the time, and when I got out of the army, we moved up here in the mountains on north of Laytonville. It's about three and a half hours north of San Francisco. It's kind of a mix of sort of back to the land hippies, crazy mountain people, uh, cowboys. We didn't have electricity or TV or cartoons, but Trey actually liked it. He could, you know, run around and make as much noise as he wanted. The great evil, great evil. Loud, rowdy, you know, big mouth, always putting on an act. You go up to somebody on Fifth Avenue and you say, Hello, Chop, young age. He was a handful. <laughs> Larry uh, Livermore was our neighbor up on the mountain. When I was a kid, I always thought of him as this wild kind of punk rock guy. I was trying to have a punk rock band, so I needed a, a drummer. <laughs> There was a lot of musicians there, but they were mostly hippie musicians, and they hated the kind of music we were trying to play. So I figured the only way was to get one of the kids that just didn't really have any preconceptions. He needed a drummer really bad, so he said, hey, kid, <laughs> how about these? As soon as he got on the drums, he just took off. Trey he was only 11 or 12 years old at the time. He drummed on everything. Any surface was his drum. In the car, I was like, could you please? He got to where he could play the drums pretty good. I'd say within uh, a month or two, you know, we were pretty sure we had a band. And that's how they formed the band, The Lookouts. Oh, you remember this for the rest of your life. We're a punk rock band, and we all had to have punk names. And uh, it's pretty cool. It was as obvious, it seemed to me. Uh, I had a little bit of French, so why not? He loved it, though. He thought, I'm a rock star now. Once Trey got into high school, he was pretty serious about his drums. I could tell he had something going for him that was really special. He had the talent. He had the will to want to do it. And he wanted to get out of school a little early and start music and move away. I understood it right away, and, and so did his mother, that uh, if he was going to make music a career, he had to leave this little town. They realized there was no point in sticking it up for graduation. He knew he wasn't going to really do college as far as being an accountant. I mean, what would he possibly do other than drums? Trey dropped out early, and then from there went straight to Berkeley. There was this music community forming, and there was tons of opportunities. Wow! Trey just kind of started getting to know everybody. He was just the most outgoing human being you can imagine. Really the class clown of the punk scene. Trey had met Billy and Mike at Gilman and hung out with them a while. They were looking for a drummer at the time, and Trey just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Trey was just such a great drummer and, and so perfectly fit with those guys. Like a glove. <laughs> when Trey came on, he took him to the next level. I kind of knew at that point there was no chance that the lookouts were going to keep going. Trey Cool. He was loud. He was obnoxious. He was crude. Uh, he was insulting. He insulted women. He insulted men. He insulted animals. He insulted everybody, including me. Satan! <laughs> he did drugs. He was into smoking dope, and he was into doing acid. We became friends really fast, I'll just say that. <laughs> With Trey behind the drums, Green Day set out to put themselves on the map. Rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Well, you listen to one of their, like seriously, do you, sit, sit on, do you play other instruments besides drums? I have a little guitar, a little one's about this big. What, what, else, what else do you listen to on the way of music? Um, all kinds of, like, a lot of Beatles, I like the Beatles, you oh. know. And the, Normal stuff. And the other lads? Kind of, you know, like a lot of old, like Billy listens to like a lot of old like vinyl and stuff, like yeah. Fang and just like old like punk stuff. And, you know, it's not, we didn't like grow up on that stuff though. It's kind of like we kind of yeah. learned about it afterwards. And you, you know. said you feel strange when people say, gee, it's this new punk thing. I'm like, yeah, you guys should like 
be, you're like the pistols and blood. You, know? you guys are like, you know, the clash. It's like, no, man. <laughs> They're not an influence on us. Like, were you influenced in a big way by this, you know, 76? It's like, nah. <laughs> right on. Who would you say your influences were? <clears throat> we were influenced the opposite of what influences usually are. You know, like, we are influenced on, like, what we hated. <laughs> like, Hall and Oates. Like, you know, all this, you know, Cindy Lauper, all this, like, 80s crap. Yeah. That just just like, didn't want to be that. All, like, the mainstream 80s crap. Yeah. Like, the whole Martha Quinn era. <laughs> whatever. So you said if we could just avoid being that, we'll have accomplished something? Yeah, it's like, you know, like, what's lame about that? Oh, that, you know, hammer-on 10-minute guitar solo. Okay, what's lame about that? Oh, all those, you know, girls in bikinis, like, <laughs> running around. What's lame about that? Oh, like, you know, it sucks. So, yeah, I just, like, you know. Do you, think know we, what sucks. do you think we live in a better age now? Do you think people are more attuned? I don't know. That hole in the ozone's the size of Europe now, and I don't think it was back then. But <laughs> well, we're still walking around, though. Yeah. This is the last couple of years that we'll be able to walk around without the sunscreen. You know? <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> That's a very upbeat way of looking at it. Okay, Kelly? Well, obviously you're concerned about the ozone and stuff in the future, because maybe because you have a daughter. Does that, has that... See, that's that a good segue. Change? What, having a daughter? Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, it makes me, I mean, I don't think I would be as, like, you know, concerned about, you know, the future if I didn't have some offspring. Mm. I forget I said that word offspring. <laughs> just, we'll just leave that out. If I didn't have a child, you know, I wouldn't care so much about what was going to happen. I started to, like, make friends with some, like, you know, other parents and stuff, too, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. so. Are they surprised to find that you're a down-to-earth guy and not some wild rock and roll guy? No. I'm not down to earth. Well, no, I'm I didn't mean that as a pretty slur. wild guy. <laughs> I tell you, I let my hair down sometimes. Do you think you'll be fixing this room up a little bit, or it's, what's wrong with it? Uh, the heat. The heat. It's, it wouldn't be so hot if you didn't have all these stone lights. Oh, blame it on us. <laughs> okay, I think that's yeah. good for me. Do you have any more questions, Kelly? No, no. I think you can go. Thank you. No, no, no. What was that?